Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're testing the newly released Doom The Dark Ages. This is actually on Game Pass for PC so I thought I'd give it a go and see how the cheapest RTX card handles it. One option I want to mention straight away is present from compute which I've turned off otherwise I got some weird flickering lighting issues with or without the MSI Afterburn overlay. We'll be starting with TAA as well at native resolution. We can use DLSS at native and FSR and XCSS at native but they will produce worse results. So TAA to start with at 100% scale. All of the options are at their respective lowest, not just the low preset here, but everything has been turned way down and we're still exceeding our cards available VRAM apparently. So let's start off then at 1080p lowest. We probably won't go any higher in terms of the settings, but we will implement some upscaling a little on little little later on down the line. So to start with them, we're getting around 50 frames per second. I'm going to say between 40 and 50 at 1080p lowest with TAA and set to 100% res scale. I don't think this is ideal for a fast paced first person shooter such as Doom, but it doesn't feel too inconsistent. The exact figures will be up on screen, but the frame times don't seem to be that bad. Not too much stutter to speak of here. And while we're not hitting 60 frames per second it could be a lot worse it could be juddering all over the place now I've played about an hour of this game so far I've actually started again for the purpose of this video because this initial level is one of the more demanding that I've tested thus far a lot of indoor areas will run a little better and the second chapter was also running a bit better as well so I wanted to give you the worst case scenario sort of experience that I've seen so far when playing this one as you can see all of our vram has been used up almost immediately the card is running at 70 watts maximum the thing i like about this is that it doesn't require any external power so you could slip it into an old office machine with a poor quality psu we're actually going to change the settings now we'll enable dlss we won't go with ultra performance just yet we'll actually hit the quality option to see how things fare this might be what we need to hit 60 frames per second and from what I'm seeing here yeah it looks like it now the average I'm going to say is somewhere around the low 60s because from my experience earlier as well I did experience a few drops below 60 frames per second this is an indoor area so it's running slightly better but as we get back outside I'm sure things are going to dip a little more so here we are then, yeah, between 60 and 70 FPS. This isn't a bad way to play at all. It still feels pretty consistent, to be honest. Not too many dips and drops or inconsistencies with the frame time graph, as you can see on screen as well. Now, the 3056 gig low profile that I'm using, this gigabyte version, doesn't have a silent fan mode. The fans won't stop under low load, so I can always hear it sort of buzzing away. It's audible all the time, in my opinion, especially as I use an open air test bench as well. Some some people saying you can't hear it and that might be the case if it's in a case <laughs> that might be the case if it's in a case but in my experience I can hear it all the time there's a constant little buzzing noise to it as the fans were away but can't speak too ill of this card because it runs nice and cool hovering around 60 degrees here and I think it's a great way of bringing an old PC back to life as it were or giving it a new lease of life turning something that can't quite handle games or can't handle them at all into something that can. So we'll jump into the settings again, this time switching to balanced. And as we do so, I want to talk a little bit more about my system configuration today. I'm using the i5-12400F, a 6-core 12 thread chip. Now this is compatible with DDR4 or DDR5 motherboards, but I'm using DDR4 as I think that still represents best value for money. I have 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. And I think it's a pretty good example of where you might put a card like this. So that was the balanced gameplay there. Not too much of a performance increase, but we'll drop down to performance mode now. We also have ultra performance mode to test, and that's going to make things look a little blurrier. But even switching to performance here doesn't give us a huge FPS boost. We're hovering around 70 FPS now. I didn't see too many dips and drops below 60 frames per second but you are going to pay for it visually now i haven't applied any overrides from the nvidia app this is just the default dlss mode that comes with the game so yeah nothing customized outside of the game here the lowest settings with the default dlss modes applied now as you can see once again as we move our 
make our way sorry through this indoor area the frame rate is going to increase there will be moments when you're seeing 90 100 fps but those are going to be few and far between with dlss performance mode in doom the dark ages with the 6 gig 3050 rtx gpu let's just wipe out a couple of these guys here never was one for following instructions and it took me a few tries to actually do this as it did before with the um like rapidly tap e to wipe out the enemy something like that yeah that took a few tries more more tries than i'm happy to admit to but here with performance mode this is probably one of the better ways to play i don't like dropping below balanced really to be honest i don't think it's completely necessary because you're still going to get at least 60 fps pretty much most of the time with balanced dlss mode but if you want a little more peace of mind then performance is probably better with a card like this and in all honesty it doesn't look too bad at all i don't think it's as significant of a sacrifice as you may imagine playing like this but the beauty of pc gaming is that it's entirely up to you speaking of uh not bad visual quality then we'll drop to ultra performance mode and this is where you are going to notice the difference with things i'm not sure how well you can pick it up in a pretty highly compressed youtube video but this is certainly going to be noticeable in terms of the vis visual degradation when it comes to the in-game graphics and sharpness that said we are approaching 100 frames per second now at the lowest settings with DLSS Ultra Performance, rendering internally at what, 640 by 360, I imagine something along those lines. Yeah, considering the low internal resolution doesn't look all that bad, and uh, we're still pretty much encroaching on that VRAM limitation here for this 3056 gig, the cheapest RTX card. You will notice differences between this and the 8 gig in games because they are essentially two different GPUs despite having a similar name. But as I said before, this can be a great way to increase the performance of an old office machine or perhaps a tired gaming rig that's got a weaker PSU if the price is right. Of course, if you have an external power connector on your PSU, then perhaps look out for the 8 gig version instead or of course the RX 6600, which is probably similar in price on the used market, but that's gonna depend on where you live. As for this one then, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. This has been Doom the Dark Ages on the RTX 3056 gig. Hopefully this is helpful. As always, leave a like if you want to down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.